This is Twit. I read the title of this piece of news in the record, and it just made me shake my head. The item is titled, Everscale Blockchain Wallet Shutters Web Version <laughs> After Vulnerability Found. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, really? I gotta put my what? wallet on the web. That's a good idea. What moron <laughs> could possibly think that offering a web browser-based cryptocurrency <laughs> wallet was sane? Well, it's easy. It's convenient. <laughs> uh, anyone who was capable of beginning to create such a thing should know it's just a bad idea. As we often observed on this podcast, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do that. Uh, here are the first two sentences of the record's story. They wrote, quote, The company behind Eversurf, a wallet for the Everscale blockchain ecosystem, is shuttering its web version after a vulnerability was found by Checkpoint researchers. The Eversurf team confirmed that the vulnerability allowed attackers to gain access to wallets. Uh, yeah. Duh. Because it's on a web browser. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, 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 the record is reporting on research which was performed by Checkpoint Research. The Checkpoint guys explained. They said, blockchain technology and decentralized applications provide and their decentralized applications are you know web apps provide users with a number of advantages for example users can utilize the service without creating an account and it can be implemented as a single page application written in javascript this type of app no they're being very fair here this type of application does not require communication with a centralized infrastructure such as a web server and it can interact with the blockchain directly or by using a browser extension like MetaMask. In this case, the user is identified using keys that are stored on a local machine inside a browser extension or a web wallet. Okay, now the phrase web wallet itself should be outlawed, but okay. If a decentralized application or a wallet stores sensitive data locally, it must ensure this data is reliably protected. In most cases, decentralized applications running inside the browser uh, are uh, or run inside the browser and therefore may be vulnerable to attacks such as cross-side scripting, just to name one of like countless. This research describes the vulnerability found in the web version of Eversurf. Maybe we should call it Neversurf. Uh, a wallet for the Everscale blockchain. They finish by exploiting this vulnerability. It's possible to decrypt the private keys and seed phrases that are stored in the browser's local storage. Yeah. In other words... Attackers could gain full control over victims' wallets. Okay, now, Leo, you're going to love the details of this. Okay, it turns out that, that one of the code libraries the implementers used, you know, how everybody now is just grab a library here, grab a library there, and, got, you know, and hope that it hasn't been compromised by some supply chain attack, which is uh, another problem. Uh, one of the code libraries the implementers used is not fully supported, or one of the functions in one of the code libraries is not fully supported in web browsers. The code attempts to obtain a cryptographic nonce with a call to the function deviceinfo.getuniqueid. The problem is that this function requires access to its underlying device. So it's only defined when running natively on, in Java on Android, iOS, or Windows. 
I have a snippet of the function. Actually, it's the entire function. It's a one-line function because JavaScript, you know, is crazy with the with the way it it operates. I where would you're able never to write a function like this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I know this you're able to ridiculous. chain a bunch of ors, and the first or that succeeds is the one that gets taken as the value of the enclosing function. You can't anyway, really it's a, see it very well on the screen. It's, no, it's, you really notes. can't see it. Anyway, I've got a snippet of it. What it, show, what, what it shows is, for those who read JavaScript, that it is, it is obtaining a value of, of, def, of the, the underlying platform's default.uniqueID if... If there's a, an, an evaluation of the OS as Android, iOS, or Windows, and otherwise, it's a it's also a conditional expression, which is another creation of well, it exists in several languages now. It's a conditional expression. If it doesn't exist in those languages, that is, the function is undefined, then it returns unknown. Literally, the string unknown. Now, of course, the string unknown never varies, right, from browser to browser or instance to instance or user to user. So when the OS is not Android, iOS, or Windows natively, the function returns, as I said, unknown, in quotes. And thus, that value is never unique, and that value is used to salt the hash. As we learned years ago on this podcast, salting hashes is crucial to the security of hashed password storage because the salt effectively customizes the hash per use. With the salt broken, Checkpoint was able to trivially brute force the user's six-digit PIN. Yes, on top of everything else, even if the system was working correctly, its entire security was controlled by a six-digit PIN. <laughs> Checkpoint wrote, CPR, you know, Checkpoint Research, roughly re-implemented the key derivation and key store decryption in Node.js and performed a brute force attack on the PIN code. This resulted in a performance of 95 passwords per second on a four-core Intel Core i7 CPU. Although this is not a very high speed, it is sufficient for the attack on a six-digit PIN code. In the worst-case scenario, checking 10 to the sixth possible variants means the entire attack takes approximately 175 minutes, and that's worst case. They said, for our experiment... We created a new key in Surf and dumped the key store from the browser's unencrypted local storage. In our case, the attack took 38 minutes. At the end, we got the derived key and decrypted the seed phrase that can be used to restore the keys on another device. In other words, this was never secure. And in this case, I mean, first of all, as I said, the idea of doing a browser-based wallet is just nuts. It, it, it'd be like, I, I don't know, putting a wallet on a lemonade stand in the front yard and, you know, trusting that no one is going to come along and, and take it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's insane. Browsers struggle with security and you do not, you do not want your, your cryptocurrency private keys anywhere near a browser so i just i just you know and, and again the had this it, it the pro it would have been a bad idea to implement it on a browser in any event but this is a classic instance of why it's a bad idea libraries were used that were not fully understood they deployed this thing without ever verifying that the hash was never changing, and so the same hash was being used to always encrypt the user's data. 
and it just meant that the whole thing could be, be brute forcible. Checkpoint also noted that in the same way, back in the day, Leo, uh, what were those tables called? Rainbow tables. Rainbow uh, tables, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so basically you could create ra a rainbow table using some GPUs in the cloud to come up with the hashes for all 10 to the 6th possibilities, that wouldn't take a lot of time. Then you could simply decrypt everybody's wallet who has one of these things that, that you're able to get a hold of. So just, you know, a bad idea.